Coming up, what is the very best new 4x4 to tell the boss to take this job and... Or words to that effect. And then buying that off-road, acoustically transparent, aluminium chitois that you always wanted. Filling it full of your intertwined effluent, you and your lovely wife, your collection of beard stroke and gel. And then heading off, hitting the road. Into the blue singlet fading, stubby wearing, safety thong adorned. Living the dream, Aussie Sunset. I'm John Kenogan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars and blue singlet stroke and 4x4s cheap. Australia only, website, card. Today's report is inspired by a question from someone just like you, dude. Richard Green, Argy. You probably in Australia, you'd probably have to call him Bargy, wouldn't you? Bargy, get over here. The billabong's turning yellow again. What does it mean? <sighs> Bargy says, any new 4x4 that will tow an off road caravan and last into our retirement. I am 63, so I have four years of earning power before I retire. Do I need to consider waiting until an off-roader is produced that is hybrid or electric as I need this to last beyond my retirement in four years from now? Well, Bargy, I have a few strong opinion about that. And the first thing I'd suggest is if you're really hell-bent on doing this, the first thing you're going to need is a dead-set, powerful, reliable torch Fortuitously enough, Olight's sale for January is on for hmm, roughly another four hours. Until midnight tonight. The Olight Warrior 3S is a rugged tactical torch with a blinding peak output of 2300 lumens and a maximum runtime of 55 days. It's waterproof and drop tested, plus it has an auto dimming proximity sensor and it's pocket sized. Just. The Baton 3 Pro Max, a bit more EDC friendly this one, slightly brighter and it also features that proximity switch. This is Olight's first magnesium alloy torch, so it's lightweight without sacrificing strength or heat dissipation. Two O-Pens for the sale also, the Mini and the O-Pen Pro. Easiest way into the Mini just buy the Baton 3 Pro Max, spend $1 more, and they'll throw in the O-Pen Mini. The Mini is a pocket-sized pen, but the O-Pen Pro also includes a three-stage LED torch and a green laser pointer for that vital sales presentation, and also for tormenting the cat. Finally, the Roboto 3, a 75mm blade in 154 chrome molly. And basically, if you were going to make Excalibur today, you'd make it out of 154cm. I know I would. The blade here is hardened to 58 Rockwell C, which is pretty much the sweet spot for edge retention and durability. And it's titanium PVD coated. I honestly don't know how they can manage to do all of that manufacturing for the price. Links in the description, plus check out the Olight Swivel when you're there. It is perfect for the shed or the fat cave. Great in the car also. Outside the sale, you can use my code AEJC for 12% off. I carry an Olight Warrior Mini 2 every day. It is my EDC. So useful. And it hardly ever needs charging, despite the fact that I use it all the time. Go figure. Thanks very much to Olight for sponsoring this report. Slickest promotional integration on this fine, respectable channel ever. <coughs> I can agree. Now, as to Bargy's problem, I'd suggest Pajero Sport, dude. It's the best value wagon of that nature, and it's got some really strong points. Like, ladies and gentlemen, value. You can get the GLS version for, like, 
under 60 grand drive away, try doing that in an Everest that you'd like to own and the Pajero Sport is better supported. It's got a really slick transfer case. It's got proper off-road ability. 2,080 kilo curb weight with 715 kilos of payload, 3.1 tonne tow capacity. But, dude, I would really try not to tow more than about 2.2 tonnes with vehicles of this nature. Because, And I say this all the time. What essentially happens is that a caravan with centralised axle groups, like a pig trailer, is intrinsically unstable in pitch and yaw, okay? And the only thing providing it with restraint in pitch and yaw is the vehicle at the pointy end of the combination. And obviously, the heavier the van is in relation to the jigger doing the towing, the more it has the capacity to pitch and yaw and push the front vehicle off the road and given all of the things that can happen out there on the road to Dingo Piss Creek having the van nudge the vehicle off the road and then do the whole twist and pike thing like highway speeds that's unthinkable and if you're not really used to towing and driving in these conditions and by the sound of things Whenever anyone says off-road caravan to me, it means they want to drive thousands of kilometres into the outback, in which case I'd suggest that minimising the risk is really something that should be more of a priority out there in ambient outback adventuring, right? And it's not. What seems to be happening at the moment is people are maxing out in many cases and in a worrying number of cases, stepping over the line and towing far too much. So good rule of thumb, try not to exceed the curb weight of the vehicle with the weight of the caravan, fully loaded weight of the caravan, which they call the ATM or aggregate trailer mass. Now, I'm just going to run through the numbers in a second here, but I think from a whole bunch of points of view here, that the Pajero Sport is the sweet spot for adventuring of this nature, provided you can keep the weight of the van down. If you really want to max it out to the, the full three plus tonnes in that three to three and a half tonnes, there are some severe limitations that you have to come to grips with with that really heavy towing that I don't recommend. And the best vehicle for it is probably Land Cruiser 300. And the problem with that is it's going to cost you well north of a hundred grand for the one you want. And you'll have have to wait until you're virtually a candidate for the nursing home uh, until they can supply one because Toyota is turning into a basket case on vehicle supply. So for all these reasons, just try downscaling or what was that what was that term they used? The corporate slashes used to use in the 90s, right sizing. We're not downsizing the organization, we're right sizing and that's why you 500 mugs have to go kind of thing. Anyway, Pajero Sport with all that in mind and also the term off-road caravan. It's ridiculous, okay, because proper off-road driving is like sand dunes and steep descent, deep river crossings and steep ascents and things of that nature and thick mud and you just don't do that with a heavy caravan. What you're really talking about is a caravan that you can drive down a dirt road and at times a pretty rough dirt road with the inevitable outback isolated geometric deficiencies like washaways and big fat potholes and scouring and bull dust and pretty shitty overall maintenance kind of thing. And if you want it to last into your retirement, then I'd suggest peace of mind can be had with Mitsubishi's quasi 10 year warranty you get the first five years for free, if you like, but for, if you want the second five years, you have to get the vehicle serviced on time at a Mitsubishi dealer. And as the owner of a Triton, I'm into my third year with a Triton GSR, the services cost me 300 bucks, and it's once a year kind of thing or every 15,000 Ks, whichever comes first. And it's easy to do that if you're going to get some payola at the end of it, which is a 10-year warranty. Obviously, warranties don't cover wear and tear or owner abuse and things of that nature, but if you use the vehicle in a responsible way and you're prepared to pay for brakes and tyres and dampers and things of that nature, then 
the 10-year warranty still gives you pretty good peace of mind because if they find out eight years down the track that some of the blocks were a bit porous and eventually they fail and leak water and overheat, then, dude, that's a manufacturing defect and your vehicle is under warranty. So I'm not suggesting that will happen, but if it does, then there's less toss arguing down the track, right? So Mitsubishi, really good, and you can operate that vehicle in 4x4, like in four-wheel drive with the centre diff unlocked in high range on a high traction surface, which is really good for stability, and stability is even more important when you're towing your chitois than at other times. So big thumbs up for that. Not all of these 4x4 wagons that are derived from their ute cousins can do that. Everest can, but for example, D-Max cannot. So uh, MUX, sorry, which is derived from the D-Max, cannot do that. So that's a salient advantage as well, right? So drilling down into the numbers here, if you keep the van under about 2,200 kilos, you've got, let's say, to make the mathematics easy, you've got, say, 215 kilos of tow ball download. That Pajero Sport has 715 kilos of payload. I keep looking down because I want to get the numbers right. They're written down here. 715 of payload, okay? Now, your tow ball download, which is important to maintain the stability of the overall combination, especially at highway speeds, the vehicle's carrying the tow ball download of about 215, all right? And that means you've got about 500 kilos left for payload. And let's not be ambiguous about what payload is, okay? It's not just you and your lovely wife and the shit that you put in the car. It's everything that you add to it, including your accessories, and it includes the tow bar and the tow ball download because the vehicle is carrying that. Okay, so if you put a bull bar on the front and some big fat driving lights and you get talked into a winch, even though you'll never need one, by the dude at ARB or something, and you put a second spare tyre on it, you carry some tools and you put in a fire extinguisher and you go the full pimp with a roof rack and an awning and Christ knows what else, then it's pretty easy to eat up 500 kilos because you and your <coughs> lovely wife... You could be carnivores in a Western society, so you're going to be best part of 100 kilos each. And then you're going to have all that other stuff, your personal effects in the car and things of that nature, fire extinguisher, second spare tyre, the bar work, the pimbo upstairs from ARB. It's really easy to max out the weight, even if you're only towing 2.2 tonnes. So you've got to get all of these details right. And I'd suggest if you don't have an off-road van at the moment and you haven't included this information, bargy, but if you haven't got the van at the moment, buy the vehicle and then figure out what you're going to fit to it, run it over a way bridge and then figure out how heavy a van you can afford to buy based on the likely tow ball download and the weight of that vehicle and how much payload you've got left, all right? You've got to do the chicken or the egg with this. You've got to either have the van first and buy a suitable vehicle, or you've got to buy the vehicle and then buy the van that is not going to constitute an overloading proposition when you couple them both up. Really important, okay? And the final point that Bargy asked about waiting until an off-roader is produced that is hybrid or electric as I need this to last beyond my retirement in four years from now, I'd suggest that hybrid and electric, well, let's take them separately. Let's look at plug-in hybrids, okay? A plug-in hybrid adds mass. It usually deletes the spare tyre. It usually reduces the towing capacity and the payload. And for these reasons, it's just unsuitable for outback travel. It's usually also petrol, right? And what you want is a nice big fat diesel for that kind of adventuring. And it's not as if diesels and internal combustion generally are going to disappear in the next 15 years. They're just not. There is no suitable replacement for diesel in Australia. It just will not happen. Every brand new truck that gets sold this year and every brand new truck that was sold over the past 10 years, 
they're still going to be on the road for decades. And it's the only way freight gets moved around the country. So the supply of diesel is assured in this time frame. So you're going to be sweet on that. And as I see it, for Outback Adventuring, a plug-in hybrid is a net downgrade on many fundamentals. And then if you think about that and you go full electric, then electric just can't do what you want to do because if you go with an electric 4x4, you'll lose basically all your towing capacity. And if you've got any towing capacity left and you put a heavy van behind an electric 4x4, the range is just going to off a cliff, right? It's going to MH17 itself into the ocean. It's going to be ugly, right? So there is no suggestion of any te electric technology or configuration of electric 4x4 on the horizon that is going to solve the heavy van long distance towing completely unworkable situation that we see today with vehicles of this nature and I'm not anti-electric car if you said to me gonna retire got a big solar array gonna be spending a lot of time at home hate buying petrol got a bit of cash I'd say buy an MG ZS EV or a Kona electric or one of these more affordable sorts of EVs now they're not cheap the cheapest EV in the country is the MG, and it's like 50 grand. And if you step up to the Kona, even with a baby battery, it's going to cost you in the 60s. So these things are expensive purchases, but you can essentially run them for quote-unquote free if you've already got the big PV array on the roof and things of that nature, and you've got off-street parking, and you can just plug in during the day, so that's lovely. And there's no tailpipe emissions, which reduces pollution in our big cities. And if all you want to do is go down to the local beach and get a coffee and do the shopping and see your kids once in a while and you all live in, you know, within two or 300 kilometres of each other, max, then an EV, fantastic. For all other kinds of long-distance driving, though, including this heavy tow proposition that you've got on the table and I've got in front of me, then it's just unsuitable and it's not going to be suitable foreseeably soon. The best option for you is a diesel and I reckon the best diesel in that genre is the Pajero Sport from a value, warranty, support, etc. proposition. Now, one of the things I've noticed upliftingly enough when I do these Q&As is that I get some really good feedback in the comments from people who are doing this kind of thing, they're hands-on, they've had experience with it, they can recommend vans and vehicles and talk about their experience generally from a real hands-on point of view. Because I was talking to wife number six this morning and we were having this sort of rare conversation it's always dangerous to talk to somebody like that but anyway I was talking to her and I said dude if you ever find me musing about two things as I age you know buying a caravan or going on a cruise just get me a referral to a neurologist stat okay so I can't talk with authority from a van towing dingo piss creek visitation, beard stroking, stubby wearing, singlet fading, safety thong, conquering every venomous snake in the country sort of proposition. I can't do that. But perhaps you are doing that. Live in the dream. And if you are, and I've missed something, help out Bargy in the comments because, hey, we could, we could make it a thing. It's, it's worth a try. And if you wouldn't mind, could you dislike this video and give me a bit of vitriol and hate as well? Because Dude, I'm not here to be liked, and you commenters, you're letting the team down.